a tiny little tennis club in Russia, right? Like, you know, in the, like with super small population and certain things like that all around the world where like, you know, people were like great athletes, musicians, artists were being developed and what were those common factors. Um, and what he talks about is deep practice. And we talked about this a little bit with the, you know, grade 11s on, the, on, the, on, on Friday. And I think it's a really important thing. And I mean, again, I think everybody's here because they have a goal, a dream, you know, that's pretty lofty. Um, and, you know, they look at players, um, you know, whether it's a lacrosse player, um, whether it's a hockey player, whatever it may be, like you, you probably all have someone that you kind of tailor your game or, you know, dream to play like that player or want to be like that person. But do we actually understand how to get to that point, right? And, it's, and I think what, what happens, what I see here a lot on a daily basis, and this is, I think, unfortunately, I think this is development in general, especially in youth sport across the board. I see a lot of middle practice, right? I saw a lot of volume with a, not a lot of intention behind it. So we do a lot because our parents are committed and they'll drive us in rush hour traffic two hours for a half an hour skate. Or they'll drive, you know, the cross players will go down in the US and play in three tournaments. And, but so we're doing a lot. Our, intent, you know, our intentions are in the right place, but are we missing the point of what the foundation of that talent development is, right? Are we actually getting better? Or are we just doing more? Because there is a difference, right? There's a, there's a saying that less is more. And I believe that to be the case in both learning in school and in talent development. And I think for you guys, it's going to be important, right? If, and again, I, I, amongst everybody here, there's probably a, a handful of people, right? And maybe you're one of them or maybe whatever percentage it may be that truly have the attention and the desire to be able to go deep with their practice, right? To have the self-awareness be able to understand the gaps that exist. It's, it is tough, right? Like I think there is a point, like it is not for everyone, right? But people look at people like Michael Jordan and Tiger Woods and Serena Williams and they, you know, they say, well, they're, it's easy to look at them and say, um, well, they're freaks of nature, right? And even on a more like, you know, right in your own backyard is you look at Mr. Hossie, right? I'm gonna put him on the spot here because he loves to be put on the spot, right? People look at Graham, if you've ever watched Graham play the cross, is like he's a pretty vicious man, right? Like he does a lot of things really well. He runs really fast. He catches. He jumps high. You know, like you know, he's probably the epitome of what a beast would look like on the field, right? And people look at him and they say, "Well, he's a you know, he's just a genetic freak." Well, I mean, this guy is a guy who gets up every morning and works out before he comes to school, right? He he tra he tracks. He journals. He watches what he eats. He does things, he pays attention, he asks questions. He asks me too many questions, like when we're doing stuff. But again, they're deliberate. He's learning and understanding and he makes, and he wasn't always like that. How much did you weigh in high school, Graham? Well, you tell me, what's that? 112 pounds. 112 pounds, right? What grade was that? Grade nine. So 112 pounds, right? That's the epitome of someone that owns, you know, their own development, right? And they don't make excuses. So, what I want you, we're gonna watch this video, and this guy kind of goes through it. I want you, if you have your journals, I want you to take some notes, but we're gonna spend a couple of weeks talking about this, right? And I want you to start to understand and start to think, what do the next few months look for me as a student? What do they look for me as an athlete? And where do I need to get better? What does it look like when I go home for the summer? And how can I really begin to separate myself Right, and begin to do some of those things, even if it's one thing. Right, I always say in the off season you should have one thing that you can tangibly measure that I got better at this. Because everyone comes in like, oh yeah, I worked out every day, you know, and then I test them, and you know, numbers are similar, and this and that, you know. But if you have one thing, whether it's on ice, off ice, on the field, off the field, in the classroom, like again, some of you it may be a classroom thing, maybe it's a life thing, maybe it's a personal thing, maybe it's just your own headspace. Maybe that is the most important thing you need to work on, right? Yourself, which again, I'll tell you this, you know, is if you don't have yourself right, doing all the other stuff won't even matter because yourself, your mind, your soul, 
your spirit will be the foundation of everything else. And the stronger your spirit and soul is, the more you're able to push yourself and go deeper on it. Right? So if you're not taking care of your own headspace, that's a good place to start. So we're going to watch this quickly. It's just a dude lecturing. Uh, Dre's going to play the audio so it's louder, so it may not be lined up, so don't get caught up in that. In great people, they're myelin. Myelin? What's that? Myelin is the stuff, that's the technical word for it, that insulates your neurons such that the messages between them can more reliably and more quickly be communicated, be transferred. It's kind of like rubber insulation on a copper wire. If you don't have nice insulation, then electricity is going to leak out. You're not going to have efficiency there. Well, it's the same thing with our brains. We need to develop neural circuitry that is well insulated such that we can repeat certain behaviors with more speed and grace and power and all those things. You do that through the cultivation of myelin. It's the secret sauce, the holy grail of skill development. And this is what Daniel tells us about, that whether you're learning how to swing a baseball bat or play a note of box, it's all the same thing. All skill development comes down to one thing, cultivating and building and developing your myelin. How do you build your myelin? You build it through deep practice. And he talks about um, a bunch of stuff, obviously, in the book. We talk about a few of them in our philosophy center. We'll look at a handful here. But deep practice is the primary way through which we build our myelin. What is deep practice? Well, it's often called deliberate practice. And the basic idea is, here's your comfort zone. Here's where you're playing when you're in deep practice. You're not sitting here doing what's easiest for you. You're willing to go out of your comfort zone and stretch yourself. 